taking a quick look at this new Aburl series power station from Ocotil. So this is the name that they're kind of using on this new uh, supersized flagship model. And this is uh, something you might want to just take a look at if you're considering getting uh, Delta Pro, right? Because uh, uh, some of these specs are quite similar. Now, now some of them are a little bit different as well. I'll kind of, at the end of this video, I'll kind of talk about more of a comparison to the Delta Pro. But um, let's just kind of like jump in and, and a real quick uh, like overview of the specs here real quick. So we do get a 5100 watt hour battery and a 2200 watt inverter. And then, you know, of course it is an LFP battery, right? Um, definitely definitely what we expect to see in kind of these uh, these bigger like home backup uh, size systems. And then um, solar charging, we do get a thousand watts and pretty good voltage on that as well. Again, we'll, we'll kind of dive deeper into the specs and, and the design features here in a second. And then you also get uh, a UPS and they, they do claim uh, 10 milliseconds on that as well. So, so good stuff there. All right, now let's just talk about the design of this unit real quick. And as you can see, it's, it's like heavily inspired from their smaller units, which, you know, was not a bad thing. But they did um, kind of the, the one big change that they made that, I, that I'm really loving is check this out. They actually had the screen up here at the top of the unit now, and it's angled slightly upwards, right? Because, of course, this is just a great idea. Since this unit is such a such a big heavy unit, and you know with the wheels and stuff, you're going to have this thing down on the floor, right? You're not going to be like like just like lifting this thing up and putting it on tables and stuff like that. So having that screen angled up is just going to make it super easy to you know to to view what's going on. And then also we do get this uh, kind of a higher contrast display, and it does look quite nice now. Now just to kind of jump in and kind of zoom in on this a little bit, uh, I'll just touch on all these features like real quick. We do get the standard car socket. This one here is actually a, a 24 volt uh, aviation style. And then we do get six USB ports. I love seeing like, you know, like multiple USB ports on, on these things, not just two or three. And two of these are actually um, PD 100 watts. Now the inverter, we definitely have a lot to talk about here. Um, and one thing to note with this, this image that they actually have up on Amazon right now, this is showing like an overseas model. This is not the, the North American model, but basically it's the same kind of layout. You do get the, the standard like 20 amp outlets. And then the, the one on the right side there, the, the big one is actually a 30 amp RV outlet. Now this seems like, uh, you know, this seems like, like all good stuff, but the, but the, the one thing, the, the kind of like the biggest negative I see with this unit is we got to talk about the AC inverter voltage. So this thing, it, it's actually only running at 110 volts. And as you can see here that they actually show in this little demonstration, it's actually fluctuating between 109 and 110 volts. Now my Jackery 1500 kind of does the same thing and that thing's been tested. You know, the, the actual output on, on my Jackery is like 109.7. Um, so that's kind of basically probably what's causing this fluctuation. So you, you don't even get actually a true 110 volts. So this is a, this is actually a really big deal. I would just say Ocotil, if if you are watching this video, you need to update this inverter so that it puts out 120 volts, because especially with this 30 amp outlet, you know it, you know it's different if you're going to be using like a small power station and just plugging stuff directly into it, you know because anything over 108 volts is going to be no problem. It's it's going to run. It's going to run that appliance no problem. But with a big unit like this, with especially like I said with this 30 amp outlet or even if you're using the other outlets with like an extension cord right but definitely with the 30 amp outlet if you're going to have this thing hooked up to your rv or a transfer switch in your house and then powering all the wires running through your house you know that's that's like that could be a, a lot of wiring right a, a lot a lot of distance between this unit and the thing that you actually end up plugging in and if you're already at like 109 910 volts that could be like this could be like borderline unusable right if if that starts to if the voltage ultimately starts to drop towards 108 volts or so you know by the time you actually plug something in and use it so i would just say like i said like they they need to fix this like asap they should be able to kind of update this and in, inverter you know just just from software or whatever uh, it doesn't necessarily need like a whole new inverter right so um so but yeah definitely definitely fix that and if you do end up buying this unit and they don't fix that um just you know be aware of that be aware of the distance between the inverter and the thing that you're going to actually be powering you don't want to have too much wiring in between there right but yeah as far as the design and stuff like that i love seeing all the ports on the front side it just makes it real easy to use and we do actually get a dedicated power button as well now all the charging ports are on the side of the unit which isn't you know it's not my favorite, but at least they're not on the back side, so you can still kind of access them pretty easily. 
We do get the, the standard kind of, you know, three prong plug in uh, AC cord. So there's no power brick, brick with this thing, right? And um, we do get a nice little switch too. This is actually, um, it's either, you know, fast charge or slow charge basically. And of course the slower charge is gonna be quieter. It's gonna be better for the battery. And, um, and, and the reason they do have this switch too is there's no app with this unit. They have no mention of that. So that is also a little disappointing on kind of a, you know, a flagship model of, of this size, you know, this size battery. But, you know, for me, it's, it's kind of, I can take it or leave it, right? I mean, sometimes it's just nice. It's just a little bit simpler, easier to use if you're not having to worry about, you know, connecting to an app and stuff like that. So, you know, kind of pros or cons kind of depends on, depends on where you fall with that. Um, but, you know, of course, with the app, it is nice to have like kind of more remote access. So you're not going to be able to do that. And then the solar input, we do get, I think it's actually an XT90. I don't think it's an XT60, but you know, either way, it's pretty good stuff. Now we'll talk about the solar here more in a second. And then the last little thing about the design here is, is obviously the suitcase design with the wheels. And then there's a handle that comes out here, right? And then they actually have these nubs that stick out here. So you can kind of stand this thing up, which, which also just kind of makes it easier to when you want to pull out the handle and stuff like that as well, right? Now jumping back over to the solar here real quick. So this is kind of like, it's kind of like um, decent specs. A uh, thousand watts is definitely pretty good, but you know, on a, on a battery this size, you know, five kilowatt hours, I think I would have liked to have seen more closer to like 2000 watts, right? I mean, you can do 1800 watts from the wall. I think, um, you know, if we could have done 1800 watts from solar to that would have been pretty good and a little bit of a spelling here right there. So they need to fix that. But the thing is that that is pretty good is that this is actually up to 120 volts. So it's basically 12 to 120 volts is what you can charge this thing with. So, um, you know, pretty good. I'm not going to complain too much about that. Um, it, it's definitely not bad specs, right? Now they do have a grounding adapter for this thing as well. It, you know, just in case you're using this thing out somewhere where you're going to be required to ground it, right? So that's that's pretty good. Now, I don't know if that's included, but but you know, it's definitely uh, something that's available for it. And then the last little thing that, you know, of course, with a unit this size, 111 pounds. So, you know, you shouldn't be too su surprised by that. But, um, you know, definitely something you're going to want to take note of, right? Um, I guess, you know, it's fine once you get it in your house or whatever, and you're just going to be wheeling it around, right? But, um, you know, kind of, if you're going to be lifting this thing up into a vehicle or something like that, you might want to have a second, second pair of hands for that, right? All right, now just to do a quick comparison to the Delta Pro here real quick, um, 3.6 kilowatt hours for the Delta Pro, but you know, the advantage that the Delta Pro does have is that it is expandable, right? And you can actually get multiple batteries to kind of give you over 10 kilowatt hours. But even if you just buy like the main unit and one battery, it would give you, you know, a little bit more capacity than the Socotil does. But then at that price point, you're going to be paying kind of a lot more, right? And then if you do have two of the main units together, so this is not just, you know, with the extra battery, you can get this, what they call double voltage hub. So this is basically split phase 240 volt outlet. So this is something, again, you can't get on the Ocotil. And then the inverter, this is kind of the, the biggest advantage that Delta Pro has, you know, 3,600 watts. And then you can even go up a little bit above that if, if you really need to with that X-Boost feature. Um, but you know that 3,600 watts continuous, but this could kind of be pro or con, right? I mean, I mean, if you want to run like you know multiple loads, multiple large loads simultaneously, then obviously this is the way to go. But the the downside of having such a large inverter like that, especially if you're going to be basically having that inverter run 24/7, that thing is going to use a ton of power, right? Just just the just the inverter powering itself, you know, just the that kind of idle consumption of the inverter. So, um, so, you know, really, you know, the 2200 watt inverter on the Ocotil, you know, that might, you know, maybe th that could be a, a, a plus. Like I said, if you're going to be running this thing 24 seven, you just got to kind of be aware that you can't run, you know, big stuff, a whole bunch of big stuff at the same time. Right. So yeah, that's just a quick overview of this Ocotil P5000 Aburl. And actually, if you're kind of curious about this thing on YouTube, they do have a nice little video of kind of like a factory tour of this thing being assembled that you might want to check out as well. So, um, so yeah, hopefully you just kind of found this, this, uh, all this information and this comparison to the Delta Pro helpful or useful. And yeah, thanks for watching.